Wyatt Smith. He's the chief training officer, not only for our personnel down here on the ground, but also our astronauts up in space. <coughs> now, Wyatt, we just heard from Ray, members of this team, you guys have been training for this first orbital flight for years. So first off, you know, what, what are just some of the things that you've been in charge of trying to get the ground team ready for this very historic flight? Um, we've been working uh, for about five years on development of uh, all the training products and simulators that have gone into the training. Um, so there's been a lot of effort by uh, the simulator development team mm -hmm. and obviously the instructors to develop all the products, uh, the classroom lessons uh, to get ready for this. And so this is, this is a first. So I'm assuming any time it's a first, a lot of extra effort has to go in to preparing the team for something. Yeah, there was a lot of effort that went into uh, the development of all the uh, the products. Um, I was involved very heavily in the development of the simulator um, interface that was used. The actual simulator is located in Dulles, uh, Virginia, mm -hmm. at the orbital facility, and we use our uh, ISS simulation uh, here and interface the two together, and that was a, a very lengthy effort that went into doing that. But we were on a pretty short time frame, so we had to do a lot of extra effort to, to get that working correctly. There was also other simulators that were developed that the uh, more small uh, simulators that the, the crew would use, mm -hmm. and those were also developed in parallel. Uh, so a lot of simulator development effort, and um, obviously all the products that were used to train the crew and the ground personnel had to be were you know built from scratch. Mm -hmm. We had a few things to use as sort of models from like HTV or other uh, vehicles. Other cargo craft. Um, yep. It wasn't the first time that we've done things like this, but uh, the vehicle is unique uh, in its own way, and so we had to uh, work pretty hard to get all that stuff complete. Okay, and you talk you talk a lot about simulators. Now, the entire team is just going through you know simulation after simulation of just everything that could possibly happen with this vehicle. Is that what's is that what's going on? Um, well, there's a, a couple different aspects. The the crew is only involved in the really later uh, portions of the rendezvous, so mm -hmm. uh, they get trained on um, maybe the last couple hours or maybe even the last hour of the of the event. Um, and it's really on that focus is really on their their task that they have to perform at that time. And what is what is what what would the crew's task be in that final those final moments? Um, the crew is responsible since this is a demo mission. Mm -hmm. The crew is responsible for. Um, watching the vehicle come up, what's called the R-bar, so from underneath ISS. Okay. They'll be monitoring the vehicle, make sure that it's on its correct trajectory toward uh, the grapple point. And also they perform some uh, demonstrated uh, de demo objectives that are uh, where they, they pause the vehicle and make it uh, go away using a command panel that they have. Mm -hmm. um, so they have to report to the ground how the vehicle's performing uh, with a lot of uh, visual aids that they have. Um, and then they actually do the grapple with the arm. Uh, the ground personnel are watching from much further out on uh, the orbital team you know they obviously watch the whole entire uh, rendezvous and then there's a, a joint operations phase that occurs uh, maybe for the last four hours of mm -hmm. the the flight in which the team here is heavily involved in monitoring the vehicle and some demo things that happen um, but during the simulations uh, we we do all the nominal operations we verify all the procedures are correct and we also put in um, I'm the evil guy, mm -hmm. so our team gets to put in uh, a lot of uh, malfunctions and make sure that the ground team and the crew respond correctly to what the malfunctions are. So you get to try and trip them up, have a little fun. We, we try our hardest to trip them up. Yeah. Um, you know, we have to make sure they can do all the nominal procedures correctly, mm -hmm. but we do uh, uh, try to put some things in there that are that are helping them learn and exercising flight rules that we have. Uh, so it's it's good to see the you know the teams come together mm -hmm. uh, and perform well and you said with the last in the last few hours is really a joint operation between NASA and right. orbital it's not just you know one or the other um, what are what are some of the things you've learned or experienced uh, in tr joint training with orbital I mean has it been vastly different uh, say from training for an ATV or an HTV international partner vastly different from training for SpaceX Similar? Uh, it's similar. I think um, the biggest thing that I saw was that, you know, Orbital had a certain way of operating. Um, mm -hmm. They've operated satellites for years you know, in-house. Um, but then you bring the NASA team in, and so there's a, a different element of, of 
information exchange that occurs in the, the nominal procedures. And uh, I think that, you know, the first few simulations we did really brought out that that's going to be a little bit of a difficult choreography to pull all that together. Mm -hmm. So they, they worked real hard, and uh, I think, you know, in the last few simulations, we really saw it being very crisp and clean. Uh, so they, you know, they kind of started off with, you know, what do we say and how do we do this, and, and it has evolved. Um, there's also um, JAX is involved, so we had those uh, those guys in simulations because uh, Orbital uses the the proc system in the gym to get radio communication with their vehicle when okay. it's within range. So we had uh, trilateral simulations simulations with um, with the JAXA guys, and uh, that just you know added a, a third element of of complexity to it. But um, can't make things know. easy. Well, it all worked out, and I think that uh, everybody's prepared. Okay, is now in the in the training flow for everything. Is there any uh, particular moment in this demo mission that has received you know special focus required uh, a lot of training, something maybe that hasn't been done yet, or because it is uh, obviously a lot of it's all new because it's a new vehicle. But is there any part of the training flow that really you guys had to hone in on? Um, I think the last two hours of the the rendezvous are are probably what got the most focus. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's when, you know, the vehicle's getting closer and things are getting a little bit m more uh, fast-paced. And uh, so I think that's, you know, where the crew gets really involved and there's a lot of, you know, once the vehicle's, you know, within a, a couple hundred meters of station, you know, you want to make sure that everything goes good. So we we certainly did that on most of the simulations. We also did some departure simulations, but those are a little, little more easy to do than the, the really close-in stuff. And and right right before this, you had told me you guys have been preparing for this, you know, for years. You and the team uh, done a lot of hard work. You guys kind of excited to finally see it all come to fruition? Yeah, we're very excited. There's been a lot of delays that have happened over the past couple of years because of various different things that have mm -hmm. happened in the vehicle development. And uh, it's hard to believe that it's finally here, and uh, we're certainly very excited about it. Um, this This week, I think one thing that comes to mind is that we do we also do onboard training for the crew so the crew has a, a small simulator on board and uh, we do various different briefings with the crew mm -hmm. in and this started this past Monday and it goes to um, uh, the, the arrival date in a couple weeks and it's real exciting to see that happen because that kind of shows you that it's real and it's actually going to happen so we're we're excited to finally, finally get that part of it going and uh, um, have a success. All right, and it is a very exciting time. Again, Wyatt Smith, he's our chief training officer for our teams down here and for our astronauts getting ready for that first orbital demonstration mission to the International Space Station, launching on September 17th, grapple and docking on September 22nd. So, Wyatt, thanks so much. Uh, great job to you and the team. Really looking forward to watching a successful operation. I know you, it's in great hands, so we're really excited, too. Thank you.